It was a dreary, gray day in the Turtle Lake community as John Kraft drove by his neighbor's farmstead. A sense of dread crawled up his neck at the sight of the laundry on the clothesline. The clothes had been left hanging overnight and he thought it odd that they would be left out in this soggy, wet weather. His gut told him something wasn't quite right and he needed to check it out. He got out of his vehicle and made his way across the soggy earth, heading towards the house. The sound of rooting pigs coming from the barn stopped him in his tracks. He glanced from the barn to the house and back. He purposefully made his way to the barn. The barn door lay open eerily beckoning John Kraft inside. He swallowed the lump in his throat and after a brief moment of hesitation he walked in. The corrosive smell of death evaded the barn as he walked deeper inside until his eyes focused on the oddly placed lumps on the ground. Kraft got closer and closer and was rewarded with a dreadful sight. There on the ground were the lifeless bodies of Jacob Wolf and two of his daughters Maria and Edna. Kraft gasped in disbelief. He found it hard to digest what he was seeing. But he didn't have long to absorb the horror before he noticed the open trap door. With a sense of foreboding, he entered through the trap door which led him to the basement of the house. There he found five more destroyed bodies. Kraft turned to leave but paused when he heard the sound of a baby. There in a cradle was a lightly clothed infant. She hadn't eaten in two days and kicked and cooed weakly. Jacob Wolf was the wealthy patriarch of the Wolf family. He was well known in the Turtle Lake community. The Wolf family appeared to be a happy well-functioning bunch with a brood of six daughters whose ages ranged from 13 years old to 8 months. Life had been good for Wolf and his family as they built their life around their farmstead. Jacob Wolf and his family were well liked in the community and seemed to be unlikely victims of such a heinous crime. The police were left to solve a shockingly bloody and callous tragedy with no suspects. What most of the citizens of Turtle Lake didn't realize, was that Jacob Wolf did have an issue with someone in their town. Wolf had expressed great fear for his safety but the area lawman, Sheriff Stefrud, hadn't gotten around to his complaints. Now that the family had been murdered it had all of his attention. Too little too late perhaps but the sheriff was determined to solve the murder case. The sheriff went up to the Wolf farmhouse and spent the night there with the body still in the home. He'd sat in the gloomy house for hours with three of the Wolf's neighbors. As 5.30 a.m. approached, Sheriff Stefrud sent the three men out for coffee and breakfast while he waited at the property. As the three men drove away, the sheriff was alerted to a car making its way across the prairie and towards the murder house under the cloak of the retreating pre-dawn light. The lawman watched with great interest as the car pulled up on the far side of the home. A man exited the car and purposefully marched to the house. He cupped his hand against the glass pane of the window and peered inside. After a moment, he strode towards the barn. The sheriff called out to the man who stopped dead in his tracks at the sound of the voice. They say a murderer always returns to the scene of the crime. Unfortunately for Henry Lair, he couldn't resist returning to the Wolf farmhouse. He'd inserted himself into the Wolf family murders and he would only entangle himself deeper as time went on. The observant sheriff noticed that Lair kept his right hand in his pocket. Henry Lair had seemed determined to muddle the investigation by making a lot of useless suggestions and a logical hypothesis, until finally he came up with the idea to look for eggs in the barn. Suspicious of this weird suggestion, Sheriff Stefford decided to humor the odd man and the sheriff along with the other three men made their way to the barn to let things play out. After some time in the barn, Lair cried out that he found something and it just happened to be some discharged shotgun shells that he'd found in the hay. The sharp lawman had noticed that after finding the shells, Lair was no longer hiding his hand in his pocket. When word got back to the sheriff that there had been an incident between Jacob Wolf and Henry Lair the net began to close around Henry. Apparently, Lair's livestock had made their way onto Wolf's property and Wolf's dog had bitten one of Lair's cows. As the funeral services were conducted for the murdered victims, Henry Lair asked that the coffin lids could be raised so he could look at their faces one last time but unbeknownst to him law enforcement were at his farm questioning his family about the crime. As Lair is taken away he was afforded the privilege of kissing his family goodbye, something he did not afford the Wolf family.
The inquisitors and lawmen brought immense pressure down on Lair to confess to the crime but he was stoic and refused until they brought in grisly photographs of the dead members of the family. The torn, mangled bodies were displayed before him. This was enough to break the dam. Lair broke down and confessed. Fury boiled in his belly. This was the last straw. Lair marched over to the wolf property to demand compensation for wolf's dog biting his cow. Wolf demanded Lair leave his property over the ridiculous claim, but an angry Lair refused. Wolf went into the house and when he returned he held a double-barreled shotgun. He put two shells in the chamber. Lair made a grab for the gun and the two men fought for the gun. Two gunshots rang out echoing across the sky. A scream accompanied the gun blast when a hole tore through the bodies of Mrs. Wolf and another blasting into a chore boy. Jacob Wolf took off running but Wolf caught up to him and blasted him in the back. Once Wolf was down, Lair shot him again at close range. At this point, Lair had to tie up loose ends. He glanced up, his blood splattered face staring at Maria and Edna who ran screaming into the barn with Lair fast on their trail. After he'd killed those two he went running back into the house to quiet Bertha, Lydia, and Martha, forever. Lair dragged the bodies of Jacob, and the two girls into the barn where he haphazardly covered them with hay and dirt. He stowed away the other family members in the cellar. Lair was given a life sentence but died in prison five years after his sentence. Emma Wolf, the lone survivor of the massacre was raised by her aunt and uncle until the age of 15, only learning at the age of 6 that they were not her true parents. When they died she was given over to Emil Haas, a local grocer, until the age of 18. Lair said the only reason he didn't kill baby Emma was because he didn't know she was in the cradle sleeping at the time. Thank you for joining us today on Crime Realm TV. Please like, comment and share the video. Until next time.